My argument is that we should try our very best to treat people without regard to race, both in our personal lives and our public policy. Of course. Because in the past 10 years, it has be become very popular to, in the name of anti-racism, mm -hmm. teach a kind of philosophy to our children and in general that says your race is everything. Right, and I think that is the wrong way to fight racism. If I'm being honest with you, because I want to be, believe that you are being used as a pawn by the right, and that you're a charlatan of sorts. He's, he's not a Republican. Well, so how do you? Who, who, he's who never voted well, you're, 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 Welcome back. Thanks for watching. Today's video comes to us from The Spew and their guest, podcaster and author Coleman Hughes, who I must admit I'm not familiar with, but I'm very glad and surprised that they brought him on that show. From what I can tell about him, he's a sort of anti Ibrahim X. Kendi. Two of the Spew hosts were clearly not intellectually prepared to deal with Mr. Hughes, which shows in their hilariously embarrassing responses to his sound arguments. My argument is that we should try our very best to treat people without regard to race, both in our personal lives and our public policy. Of course. The reason I wrote this book is because in the past 10 years it has be become very popular to in the name of anti-racism mm -hmm. teach a kind of philosophy to our children and in, in general that says your race is everything right and I think that is the wrong way to fight racism and that's why I wrote this book at this time how can you argue with that well, can I I'm sorry baby yeah. can I just point out that oh great there is a reason for that you know when I went to school getting any information about anyone's race was not taught no <coughs> history there was no black history none of those things were taught and here in america a hundred years ago when i was a young woman <laughs> that's how people saw you that's how they judged you so i think it's, it, i don't want to say it's the your youth but i think you have a point but I think you have to also take into consideration what people have lived through in order to understand why there has been such a, a, a pointing of very specific racial things like women couldn't go to get into colleges if you are a black person there are a lot of colleges wouldn't accept you trying to equal the playing field I think that's what a lot of folks were have been trying to do that right there was Whoopi Goldberg desperately trying to read what she's supposed to say off notes that somebody prepared for her and rationalizing racism as different when her team does it because there was racism in the past and we need more racism now to fix racism. It's so dumb. It makes no sense. And if you just logically think it through, you can see that it will result in an endless loop of oppression, grievance, then oppression to fix that grievance, then more grievance and more oppression. Well, 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 how the turntables. That is, if the society doesn't destroy itself in the process. But this is the kind of stuff that gets peddled by the hack fraud Ibrahim X. Kendi, who idiotically believes that the only remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination. The only remedy to present discrimination is future discrimination, which as this New York Times article points out, is a belief that two wrongs do make a right. What an asshole. We have very different cultures all living together in one yes. country, so I'm not gonna deny that, but I think I view this notion of a colorblind society similar to the idea of a peaceful society, which is to say it's an ideal, it's a North Star, mm -hmm. and the point is not that we're ever gonna get there, we're not gonna touch it, but we have to know when we're going forward and when we're going backwards, and we're going backwards when we're doing woke kindergarten in San Francisco, uh, you know, with, with, you didn't hear about this story? No, you no. Know. Oh, of course. The default right now in, in, in a lot of areas of policy is to use you know, black and Hispanic identity as a proxy for disadvantage. And my argument is that you actually get a better picture of who needs help by looking at socioeconomics right. and, and income. Mm -hmm. that, that picks out people in a more accurate way. That boy is good. When you say that uh, socioeconomics picks out people in a better way than mm -hmm. race, mm -hmm. When you do look at the socioeconomics, you see the huge disparity between white households and black households. You see the huge disparity between white households and Hispanic households. So your argument, and I've read your book twice because I wanted to give it a chance, mm. um, your argument that race has no place in that equation is really fundamentally flawed in my no, opinion. No, well. All right, this chick is 
toast. I'm sorry, but I just got to jump in here real quick and point out that Sonny Hostin, who has a long documented record of anti-white racism, chooses to compare whites to everyone else, which is what we typically see from these folks. When in fact, it's Asians who are the most advantaged in this white supremacist country. There's two separate questions. One is whether each racial group is socioeconomically the same. That, well, the, I agree with you, the, they're the, not. The, yeah, of they're course. not, and the stats the question is, show that. But the, yeah, of course, I agree with that fully. The question is, how do you how do you address that in the way that actually targets poverty the best? Great. And what Martin Luther King wrote in his book, Why We Can't Wait, mm -hmm. is he called it, we need a bill of rights for the disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, we should address racial inequality. Yes, right. we should address the legacy of slavery. But the way to do that is on the basis of class. And that will disproportionately target blacks and Hispanics because they're disproportionately poor, but it will be doing so in a way that also helps the white poor. Hey, that sounds pretty good. Exactly right. And that's the only way it makes sense to do something like this if you're gonna do it. Otherwise, the government's just giving special privileges to people based on their skin color, while other disadvantaged people of the wrong skin color are left out. Which again, would be racial discrimination by the government, which is not only illegal, but morally wrong. As you are a student of Dr. King, I'm not only a student of Dr. King, I know his daughter, Bernice. Right? Mm. Holy fucking shit. She's got nothing. So she's going to use an appeal to authority because she supposedly knows Dr. King's daughter, which doesn't say much about King's daughter or Sonny Hostin because one of these people believes that racism is bad always and the other believes that it's a weapon to wield. So I, I'm going to get to my question. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Um, I think the premise is fundamentally flawed. You, you claim that colorblindness was the goal of the civil rights movement mm -hmm. based upon Dr. King's I have a dream speech, you know, content of character versus the um, color of skin. Yeah. Bernice, Dr. King's daughter, points out that four years after giving that speech, actually, um, Dr. King also said this. A society that has done something special against the Negro for hundreds of years must now do something special for Negroes. Your argument for colorblindness, I think, is something that the right has co-opted. And so many in the black community, if I'm being honest with you, because I want to be, believe that you are being used as a pawn by the right and that you're a charlatan of sorts. He's, he's not a Republican. Well, so how do you, who, who, he's who never voted well, you, for you, a Republican. Okay, let's, let's give it, let's okay, let him so answer. Yes. First thing I wanna, I, I think it's very important. The quote that you just pointed out about doing something special for the Negro. That's yes. from the book, Why We Can't Wait, that I, that I just mentioned. Yes. A couple paragraphs later, he lays out exactly what that something special was, yes. and it was the Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged, a broad class-based po policy. But he also says okay. you must include race. <clears throat> no, he didn't, he says it's Yes, a, he does. Okay, well, everyone can go, everyone should go read the book, Why We Can't Wait. Let's not get <laughs> sidetracked by that. Yeah, you clearly trust the unhinged Sonny Hostin at your own peril. She's got nothing, and so she relies on conspiracy theories and trying to discredit this guy as a charlatan. This guy's a charlatan, but we're listening to the insane rantings of people who think Ibrahim X. Kendi is smart. I don't think I've been co-opted by anyone. I've only voted twice, both for Democrats. Mm -hmm. Although I'm an independent, I would vote for a Republican, mm -hmm. probably a non-Trump Republican if they were compelling. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's any evidence I've been co-opted by anyone. And I think that that's that's a, an ad hominem tactic people use to not address really the important conversations we're having here. And I'd, I think it's better and it would be better for everyone if we stuck to the topics rather than but make it about me but with no, about no evidence you, but that I, I, I just I want to give you the opportunity to respond yeah, to the, I, I appreciate your it. the criticism. I appreciate it. There's no evidence that I've been co-opted by anyone. I have an independent podcast. Mm -hmm. I work for CNN as an analyst. Mm -hmm. I write for the free press. I'm independent in all of these endeavors and no one is paying me to say what I'm saying. I'm saying it because I feel it. Do you also Okay, hold on, hold on. We, we, we're taking a, we gotta go to break. Well, that about does her. Wraps are all up. Which way will we go? The Coleman Hughes way or the Sonny Host and Ibrahim X. Kendi road to hell way? Let me know in the comments. All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, subscribe, and make sure to keep checking back for more. Thanks a lot.